After that, we're in conversation with actress Ellen Pompeo, star of the long-running TV series Grey's Anatomy. Just how much longer it will run is the mystery our Tracy Smith will be trying to get to the bottom of. You're lost. I'm not lost. Grey's Anatomy is the longest-running primetime medical drama on TV. And now the burning question for the show's star and producer, Ellen Pompeo, is when or how to end it. Are you looking now, and I'm not trying to make you give anything away, but are <laughs> yes, you? Yes, you are. I'm not, yes, I you are. Not. Everybody does. Okay, but still, her answer might surprise you. Ellen Pompeo, later on Sunday morning. For 17 seasons, fans of the TV show Grey's Anatomy have watched Ellen Pompeo's character graduate from intern to surgeon. This morning, she's out of the hospital and in conversation with Tracy Smith. So you had this garden before COVID. I did, yes, luckily. You might not know that Ellen Pompeo oh, is quite the I'm home coming. gardener. This is amazing. Why did you decide to set this up? Um, I, you know, I grew up with gardens as a kid. Should we go in? Yeah. Last week, we got a tour of the nursery shed. I have parsley and cilantro. This is all my herbs. Outside the Los Angeles home, she shares with her husband and three kids. Oregano is a really good, um, they say it's like, it has antiviral properties. So like oregano oil for flu and colds is really good. But I just like chew on the leaves. and. You chew oregano? Yep, I you chew oregano. You are an Italian girl. I am an Italian girl. <laughs> I say I cook like an Italian and tell a story like an Irish. <laughs> of course, she's a lot better known for something else she's been helping to grow for the past 17 years. That's one of us down there. The first one of us. Where's your loyalty? Her show, ABC's Grey's Anatomy happens to be the longest running primetime medical drama on American TV, 17 seasons and counting. Dr. Quick, he's sick, he's terribly sick. What happened? By comparison, Dr. Kildare only lasted five years. The landmark CBS series MASH ran for 11. People's just sluggish. Oh, Ophthalmoscope. And the perennial favorite ER said goodbye after 15 seasons. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. As the show's title character, Dr. Meredith Grey. <laughs> Ellen Pompeo has survived all manner of calamity and heartbreak. But this season, Dr. Gray herself has COVID-19. Do I choose? Do I get to decide if I go back? And in recent episodes, she's been drifting in and out of a dream sequence from which she may or may not awaken. Meredith! And now millions of fans are on pins and needles waiting to see if Dr. Gray and her namesake show lives or dies. Are you looking now and I'm not trying to make you give anything away. But are <laughs> yes, you, you are. I'm not. Of course I swear you are. I'm not. Everybody does. I okay, can't maybe say. A little. Can't no. say. We honestly have not decided. We're really trying to figure it out right now. You're um, in the middle of deciding whether it ends or it yes, doesn't. Yes, it, it's it's what story do we tell to end a show this iconic? How you know? How do we do it? I just want to make sure we do this character and this show and the fans. I want to make sure we do it right. Derek. And you can bet it'll be heart stopping. It's okay. For her, emotion seems to come naturally. Born in a working class Boston suburb, Ellen Pompeo had, by her own admission, a melancholy childhood. I was quite sad as a child. I think people might have, you know, my sisters or my family might have other impressions of me. But I definitely, you know, had a very sad childhood because I lost my mother when I was four. So that shapes your entire existence, I think. How does something that traumatic affect a kid? I mean, how did it affect you? I think it probably made me want to get out of there. You know, that place represented sadness for me. So I thought maybe anywhere but there would be better. And luckily for me, I found a way to monetize all my emotion. 
you know. <laughs> well, Chandler and I used to make out. A lot. Like most struggling actors. Are you my deadhead? Pompeo's first on-screen roles were mostly small and often forgettable. That is, until her agent convinced her to stop taking bit parts and do a TV pilot for a medical show. I got cut out of a bunch of movies. So then it came to a point where then I needed money. So I did the Grey's pilot. Because you needed money. My agent said, you know what, I said, I don't want to be stuck on a medical show for six years. I don't think I'll be happy. I think I'll be bored. And he said, you know, Ellen, just take the job. It's going to last, you know, a month, six weeks at best, and these things never go. So I said, oh, they don't? And he said, no, no, it'll just be a job, and you'll be right back to being broken, unemployed, and complaining in a couple of months. And I said, okay. I need to feel as valued as you say you value me. I need to be able to look in the mirror. This is just not enough. Do you have a number in mind? And now, 17 years later, Pompeo says she's learned just what she's worth to the network and how to ask for it. You are one of the highest paid actors on TV. And I would imagine that I know that didn't come easy. No, <laughs> of course not. No. But in my specific instance, I had a very specific number that I can see what Grey's Anatomy has generated. I can see exactly how much that show makes for one of the biggest corporations in the world. And her end of the deal is reported to be $20 million a year. Grey? Yeah. Well done. And as for what comes next, Pompeo says even she doesn't know. I mean, as we sit here, we don't know whether Meredith is alive or dead, basically. Right. We don't know. I'm in that we. You're in that we. Yeah. You really don't know at this point. I mean, you know, we, we have choices. This is not bad for a girl from Everett, Mass. No, no, it's not bad. But no matter what happens on the show this season, Ellen Pompeo will, to some at least, always be Dr. Meredith Grey. And she, in a way, will live forever. It's a blessing, of course. You're of course. on a hit show. Yes. But at the same time, you do have to kind of go, OK, now I'm in this box. What, how, what comes next? How do I find my way out? Yeah, I guess you could look at it like that. I looked at myself as if I was in a box when I was uh, 35 years old. Now I'm 50, and I would never look at myself that way. So with age comes wisdom. And now how do you see it? And now how do I see it? Well, I could do anything I want. <laughs> or not do anything at all.